Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. My guest today I've known from the gym for quite a while, and I watch her train, and she makes me very jealous that she's so limber like Gumby, <laughs> because I can't do those things. But aside from training and everything else, she's a very talented person, and it's my pleasure to have THE Molly White. Got to have THE in front of her. Well, you know, other names are taken, so. Of course. Way to stand out a little bit. Now. <laughs> Your workouts in the gym are just a small part of your life. Yes. You do photography. I do photography. And? And fitness modeling. Yeah. And I've got a couple other health and wellness projects that I'm working towards, including a tailor-made uh, fitness line and some, especially like phone mounts and different things that are for fitness recordings. And I've developed an all-natural pre-workout as well. Oh my God, you got a lot going. Yeah. All right, so what's a natural pre-workout? Well, it's a proprietary blend. <laughs> it's okay. actually just one ingredient, um, yeah. and it's it's done in a specific way that you can increase your focus, increase your stamina, and just work out a little bit harder without having to have as many um, stimulants and stuff in your system. I have a lot of trouble with beta alanine. It gives me that like. Oh, I have a bottle in there. I've never taken it. Beta alanine? Yeah. So for a lot of people, they get like tingly feelings from it. Yeah. I get like stabby feelings. <laughs> Is that from the niacin that's in it? That's that's the beta alanine actually. For in a lot of pre-workouts. Okay. Um, so like the more beta alanine, the more stabby it can feel, depending on your sensitivity. But niacin does that. Niacin is can also do that. Yeah. Um, but beta alanine is usually like the the main contributor for those kinds. So of I things. shouldn't be taking it. Uh, you know, everybody takes what they want to. Oh, take. we got it free, so free is good, right? Sometimes. Um, <laughs> I don't know that you know. I don't remember ever growing up doing uh, pre-workouts. Maybe that a cup of coffee, which doesn't do much for me. And then I have some in there that I'm taking off and on from old school labs for about a couple of months. I think it gets me going a little bit, but I think what it does for me it makes me talk a lot. Yeah? Yeah, it just fires me up and it's like, <laughs> I gotta stop talking. Uh, I feel like a lot of people deal with that because it's like when you, a lot of pre workouts give you a lot of energy and a lot of like, but not a lot of focus. So some, yeah. some of them are a little bit better about focus depending on like the blend or whatever's in it or yeah. your, your reaction to it, but a lot of them give you a lack of focus. So you're coming out with this? Yes. How soon? Um, I'm hoping to be on the shelves by August. How are you marketing it? My social media? I'm going to start with social media and reach out to a couple local gyms and local chains to see if they would like to carry it because um, it's a pre-workout but also like an energy substitute as well. So I've got a liquid version and a solid version. That's a great idea. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. You put it on your website? Yes. I can link that from mine to yours. Yes, okay. when it's out. It's and when it's out, out, when we can do a little spot on that just to tell people where to get it. Yeah. Okay, your photography, is that was just a hobby or did it turn into something? Uh, so I started doing photography in 2012 just as kind of a curiosity, but then also I was a marketing director at the time, mm -hmm. and I couldn't always get the shots I wanted from the companies or brands and things that I was working with and sometimes I'd just be like, oh, it just needs to be this angle because it's got to be this for the catalog or the the advertisement or whatever it needs to be and I couldn't always just get a simple shot. Well, you had the eye. Yeah. The person you were using did not have the eye. Yeah. So I started doing photography on and off in 2012 and I've done it here and there since then and yeah. then about two years ago that turned into modeling because people kept asking me to be on the other side of the camera and for a while that was a bit awkward. I was like, no, I'm working right now. God, you sound like my daughter. She's a photographer. That's what she does for a living. She's mm -hmm. going to Florida next week, and she just got back from Iceland. She shoots for Billboard and Hollywood Reporter covers. Oh, nice. That's fun. And she's cute as she can be, and they always say, you should be modest. And, nope. I like being behind the camera. That's what I like. It's it's really fun to be behind the camera. I will say that being behind it and in front of it helps in both sides of the spectrum. So if I'm working with a model, I'm able to communicate more effectively, I feel like, because I also do modeling, so I can tell them, right. oh, do this angle, do this pose, and able to kind of like demonstrate a little bit more effectively. Right. Um, and then same thing from a modeling standpoint, it helps to like, oh, know the lighting and the angles and like more or less. What Lighting's you're going everything. For. Mm, lighting is in fact everything. Uh, everything, and it's so it's so unbelievable. People don't know that. I mean, I see people take pictures and go stand in the sun. No, I don't want to stand in the sun. You get dark shadows in your eyes, and then you look terrible. 
you know, you got to find the diffuse light. You know how that goes. But most yeah. people with their little cameras, they don't know what they're doing. Their phones and no. they're off center and they're out in the distance. And they always want to take a picture, a long shot, and you got all this stuff behind you, and you're about this big in the center, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just it's just not as captivating because you just kind of get lost in the shot. Yeah. To it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you that's get, always kind of funny. You can take the same two people and put them everywhere in every shot, and it always looks the same. Well, I saw some of your modeling pictures. You look great. Thank you. I mean, really Thank beautiful. You. And um, that's probably something you should be doing a lot of. I'm looking at doing more of that. I'm looking at doing more of that. Is it difficult? Um, yes and no. It just depends on what look you're going for and what you're looking to do. I haven't been doing it very long, so two years as far as like a modeling portfolio and everything goes isn't. Yeah, but you have a unique look. I do, and that definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, my, most recently, I worked with Adidas, which I was super stoked about. Yeah. Because uh, of the fitness brands you're working with, that's like. They give you some shoes. Yeah, they actually gave me like a whole outfit and did some nice? events and stuff with it. It was really fun. I was already a fan, so I'm just more so. I like deals like that. I used to do stuff for Nike. Well, actually, that was when I was doing the Incredible Hulk. They gave me a, once a month. They come to their uh, outlet for their uh, promotional stuff. They give me two pairs of shoes and shirts. So I had all these shoes saved up. I mean, these Nike Airs, I mean, they were nice shoes, and I was married at the time. And then about a few years later, my wife at the time, I said, those shoes aren't style anymore. She threw them all out. They were brand new. They're my favorite shoes, and now I don't have them. So now I'm barefoot. That's a shame. But that was a good deal. Um, what about your fitness stuff that you're doing? Because I see you in the gym. Do you? I see you working out, but I see you stretching more than working out. Um, so I use, so I believe it or not, I actually usually train for I do weight training for about an hour, and then I usually do flexibility stuff for about twenty to thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. It just seems like forever because like I don't know because it draws a little more attention, I suppose. Well, you're standing with one leg down, and the other one's hitting the ceiling. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, that's really limber. It's got to be good for you. It's it's very good. So the way that I got into weight training and flexibility is actually because I was in a car accident. So I was in a three car collision, and my back was just shot basically and uh, they gave me stretches and exercise to do nothing they did nothing they recommended worked and I was just in debilitating pain I couldn't sit I couldn't stand I couldn't walk I couldn't lay down like everything hurt oh yeah and um, so nothing that they recommended worked um, one of the doctors had said well try some weight training exercises and he had recommended some things and I was like well I don't want to do that and he's like just go to the gym you'll be fine and I've always been active I just never done weight training yeah um, so the things that he had recommended didn't make any difference but what I had decided when I went to the gym was like, well, if I'm going to be doing weights, I'm going to do full body weights because that's going to make more sense because nothing's pinching or compensating. Right. And so it took me a while to research and find a plan for a feminine looking female because it wasn't as common a couple of years ago as it is now for women to do weight training. No, it wasn't at all. Especially having a more feminine physique. Right. But somebody at the gym had told me that I looked like Michelle Lewin and I didn't know who that was. And a friend of mine was like, you should look her up find out some information about her and so I ended up finding her fitness plan and working off of that for about I think it was like four months or so yeah and then from that I noticed there were a couple different holes based on some different things that she does for herself personally and so I kind of built my own plan based off of that and then just kept incorporating more and more things that I learned and I think it was so was, that's now like almost six months into weight training I decided that I was going to teach myself the splits for my for my birthday and I was like well, I might as well do something I've never done for my birthday. That'd be fun. The splits? And, mm -hmm. I see you do them all the time. Now you do. But before that, I was like a foot and a half off the ground, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're only 5'2", <laughs> that's, that's, that's a third of your height. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that because when I was married, my wife says, you're not very flexible. I said, I'm in that ring all the time. You've got to be flexible to wrestle. So she came in the back gate one day, and I was doing the splits out there. She says, I've never, ever seen you do that in your life. I said, apparently I can do it. I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it took me two and a half months to teach myself the splits, yeah. and I just kept pushing flexibility beyond that. Um, a friend of mine who was a junior Olympian uh, for gymnastics told me I'd never be able to do it. And I remember, I think it was like maybe a year ago, I realized that people oftentimes will say things based on who they are versus based on who you are. No, of course they will. And uh, It's a challenge. Yeah. And now I'm actually more flexible than most professional gymnasts. Yeah. Um, I, I see that. Yeah, and it's just, for, part of it for me was a curiosity, part of it was a rehabilitation thing, and I think I was telling you earlier that I had developed some of my own stretches and dynamic stretches that have done great, and so I started working with different clients and people training and doing rehabilitation stretches and workouts and mm -hmm. training and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it really comes down to your headspace and what you think and what you believe. I had uh, read a book by Dr. Caroline Leaf, and she had said that from a neuroscience standpoint, there's an neuroplasticity and so what happens is if you believe that you cannot do something you can't 
because your brain will not create the brain cells or the synapses you need to build learn that thing. But if you believe that you can, it will create the brain cells and the synapses that you need and you can learn it. I can apply that to something. I know that if I reach for this mm-hmm. and I'll say on the way there, this is probably going to knock, I'm probably going to knock that over. I'll knock it over because mm-hmm. my brain tells me I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I've had that happen on a couple of things because it, you, you do what you believe you can do. You're a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. Because there's, there's instances like that, and I, I can't think of all of them right now, that your mind will really trick you to believing you can't do it. Um, all right, just going to my back door, I, I'm going to have trouble putting the key in the lock. I'm going to have trouble. I know I'm going to have trouble. Sure enough, I have trouble. Yeah. But I can go in there at night with my eyes closed and it's dark and I can get the say, I'm just going to go in there, go right in there. Yeah. When you look for trouble, you find it. You find it. When you look for good, you find it. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing how much a perspective change can change your life. Now, your weight workouts, how mm-hmm. do you split those up? Uh, so, because being flexible and doing the weight training every day mitigated my spasms, mm-hmm. I figured out a way to do my breakdown so that I could do the training every day while still doing the rehabilitation that I needed in the rest of my muscles. So the way that I do my breakdown is that I do hamstrings, glutes, and abs day one. Mm-hmm. I do sh- uh, chest and back mm-hmm. for day two, mm-hmm. and I do quads, calves, and abs for day three, mm-hmm. and then I hit shoulders, biceps, and tries for day four, and mm-hmm. then I circle back through it. That's my old bodybuilding routine. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I always believe, and I've told viewers out there, I believe in opposing muscle groups. Mm-hmm. Chest and back together are opposing muscle groups, yep. and they work good hand in hand. Bicep, triceps, opposing muscle group. Mm-hmm. So, the, and, and if you're working shoulders, you might as well just come on down the line and work bicep, tricep along with it. That was my thought. I was like, this just fits right here. Yeah, it goes right down the line, sense. right? Yeah. And legs are something I like to do alone. Yeah. By myself in the closet. No, I mean, <laughs> but the body part by itself. There's no skipping leg day. <laughs> yeah, there's no skipping leg day. And with this injury, I've, I've been trying to get through it, and I'll do some extensions and curls, and then all of a sudden inspire some bleeding in there. And I said, no, don't do them. But I, yeah. I, I get a little stupid, and I go back and push myself. You know what I am. I just don't stop. But yeah, I, neither do I. <laughs> I think that's why we get along so well. Yeah, I don't want to stop. I, I just think that the, you you have roadblocks, but there's ways around roadblocks. You don't if they, if you're going to stop at every roadblock, you're never going to get your point of destination. No, and that's the thing, and that's and that's what everybody told me. They're like, you shouldn't be training every day. This isn't going to help. That's not going to help. It and does help. At the end of the day, nothing nothing anybody else said works. So you you can you can listen to everyone's advice. Take it with a grain of salt. What works works. What doesn't work. Put I've said this there. over and over. Look at the people at, the, at our gym on the cardio for an hour on the. Uh, uh, treadmill for an hour every day or maybe longer and you look at them every day and they never change same how's your, thing how's your diet how's your headspace how's your exactly. rest of your routine there's, how's your, there's how's a lot your, of factors involved how is your diet very good i like to eat clean because i feel better when i do however i believe in having a healthy relationship with food and what that means is i don't have cheat days i believe that there are fun foods and fun foods are for fun occasions so i don't eat things like in and out all the time I might have them after a concert or something like that, where it's more of like, a, oh, I feel like an in and out today. It's a special, it's kind of a special occasion, which is the original intent of it anyway. That's a great attitude. I, I agree with that totally. And if you think about in and out, it's not that bad. No, it's really not. The food, their food is really healthy. I mean, it's all mm-hmm. fresh. You've got beef that's fresh, tomatoes, lettuce, and all this all fresh, yeah. fresh buns. I mean, you know, you can mess it up with a bunch of chili and stuff if you want, but I don't. I like it just the way it is. Yeah. And then I'll get a four by four. Yeah, and that's the thing is a lot of people lose perspective too. A lot of women don't actually eat enough. I eat a, I eat a ton of food, and I have no qualms about eating pizza or donuts or any of those kind of things. Yeah. I just eat them strategically. So if I'm going to have a donut, I'm not going to get a Krispy Kreme. I'm going to go to Whole Foods and get a donut that's made with better quality ingredients. Right. I'm not going to go to Domino's and get a $5 pizza. I'm going to go to an Italian place and get a pizza that's been handmade with better quality ingredients. And what happens is your body's able to process real food better. A lot of the ingredients at a lot of these like McDonald's and places like that, they're not they're not real food anymore. I've never had a McDonald's. They did they did advertise about a month or two ago but we're using we're using real meat now. What were you using before? You know just the yeah, I remember a friend of mine telling me they're like they're like, oh I was looking at the ingredients on the Taco Bell website. The ground beef says thirty percent special ingredients. Yeah. And I thought about that and I got honestly I got pretty upset about that. I was like, okay, thirty percent, think about that. That's not spices and seasonings. That's Mystery. Yeah, it's mystery foods. Thirty percent is entirely too high for it to be special. It could be ground rat. Yeah, it could be anything. It's like what? What is that? I know you're right. You're and right so about it. I, I have never checked my body fat. I weigh myself maybe once a year, and it's usually because somebody's asked. 
um, and I don't count macros or calories or any of those kind of things. As you know, I'm prepping for a show. Yeah, I want to talk about that in a sec, but I want to mention one thing. I don't believe in going by the scale. I don't believe so either. It can change up and down just if I'm holding water, it's five pounds heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, and then as far as measurements, nah, I go by the way my clothes fit. Yep. If they fit me properly, then I'm doing okay. Yeah. If they're a little tight in areas, then, then there's something an issue, but I never have that problem anyway. Um, and I don't count calories or macros. I eat high protein, low carb. Mm -hmm. And if I was to add all my calories up, I think someone did it for me once. It was like 1,900 a day. That's not very much. Mm -hmm. I know people getting three, 4,000 calories a day. Uh, maybe I'm not getting enough food. I'm just not as hungry as I used to be years ago. I can eat. Yeah. I went out for a corned beef and pastrami sandwich the night. I can usually eat the whole thing. I ate half and brought half home. That's, I felt like an old housewife because <laughs> I couldn't eat it all. I was just too full. But it was a big, thick sandwich. Yeah. So basically, you're doing the right thing. I, I see, you know, because you know how you look. You look in the mirror and it looks good to you, and you know you're doing the right thing. Well, and that's what matters. A lot of people get so concerned about the numbers. And yeah. the funny thing is, I'm 5'2. I usually sit between 130 and 135. Now, to to a doctor or anybody else, they're going to be like, oh, you're too fat. You're this, you're that. I am I'm dense. <laughs> And part of that comes down to the muscle elasticity and all the, all the. Very true because I mean I have insurance through SAG and I have insurance through Medicare now. But I went with Kaiser many many years ago, and when I signed up, my, at the time my wife put me down. They, they said he's six feet, two hundred fifteen pounds. They said, "Oh no, we can't handle him. He's obese." Mm -hmm. I was in the leanest, hardest, muscular shape I'd ever been in my life. They never yeah. even saw me, but they went by the number. You're obese. Yeah, they they don't have a frame of reference for it. None. So like my, I have a twenty two inch waist at one thirty five. Like. Yeah, I know. A lot of size twos don't have that. I know, I know, I know. And so it's an interesting thing because it's like people just lose, lose perspective and part of that is they just don't know. Yeah. And knowledge is power. Exactly. So what have you got coming up? So I've got a fitness competition coming up. Mm -hmm. I am competing in the novice bikini category. It's my first competition and I'm going just to show up and see what happens. Where is it? It's in Culver City. Mm -hmm. Where um, at the Culver City Auditorium? I believe it's the Veterans oh, Memorial. Yeah, yeah, Veterans Memorial, yeah. 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 I wrestled there. Many years ago. That's very fun. Be your old, your old stopping grounds. Oh, the last time I went there, I saw Marilyn Manson. <laughs> oh, geez. I came. I was in Hawaii for a week. And I came back really tan. I remember I went on the show. I was in the main event. And someone looked at me and said, was tan. Oh, "I was tan. I was like really dark." And someone said to me, "Have you been training all week? Because you look ripped." I said, "I haven't trained all week. I've been in Hawaii all week just eating." A lot of people really undervalue how much you sh they should be eating. I know. <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, I eat more when I'm cutting than yeah. I do any other time. That's and true. I eat a fair amount. It's true. Like, your body just needs that food to process. It just wants the nutrients. Well, a lot of the pros that I now used to train with, they would diet down until like two days before a show. Uh, Schwarzenegger for one. And, and then they go out the night before the house of pies and eat all this food. And then they train. And then the next week after the show, a week later after they went off their diet, they were more ripped than they were the, before the show. Yep. Just from eating. Yep. So it made a difference. All right, so what do you have to do to get prepared for this show? Um, so I've been doing a couple things. So I've obviously been eating more. Mm -hmm. So most of, that, most of that comes down to eating more frequently to speed up my metabolism. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been doing that. I do a water flush. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you know how it goes. You hyperhydrate, mm -hmm. and then you start to cut your water. So any excess water weight, you aren't carrying. And that just shows more muscle definition. Of course it does. And so that, just lots of tanning involved to, again, show more muscle definition. Do you use a tanning spray? I did a couple rounds in the tanning, in like one of the stand-up tanning beds, yeah. do like the whole situation, and then I'm going to go and get like the whole like shellac yeah. situation on Thursday. I used to go there and take naps, just lay down in the bed and go to sleep, but I haven't done it in years, and then everybody now says, I'll do the spray tan, but I think it comes off in your clothes. Yeah, I think it's weird, so I'm only doing that as like the last, the last thing right before the show, and then be done with it and they'll wash it all off when it's done. You know, it's really weird, it, it's, it's and I don't know if you know this or not, but Physique and bodybuilding back, let's go back before my time, back in the 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. It was a lifestyle, it was a healthy lifestyle. You train at the beach, you drink and eat good foods, and you drink milk, or not milk, but they do cream for fat. Mm -hmm. They need a high protein, they lay in the sun, they get a glow. Mm -hmm. The skin would get a glow from the sun. And that's what they, they is that your stomach? Mm -hmm. you must be hungry. <laughs> I actually just ate, so it's like, it's <laughs> my stomach always grows after I eat. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's hey, going, by the way. <laughs> Thank anyway, you. <laughs> you had that healthy glow, and you get on stage, and you look good because the sun brings out the highlights. And it's much more of a natural color. Yeah. Too. Now you go down to Venice Beach to one of those contests, and I know all the guys that train, and they're sprayed, and they're orange. Their face is orange, and they have white around their eyes and white around their neck, and I think, this is just... It's, it's weird. It's weird looking. It's disgusting. They look like a carrot. So, so part of some of the ways that I'm prepping for the show are actually kind of different than a lot of other people are going to do it. Um, 
because I believe in femininity and natural beauty and a lot of those kind of things, which mm -hmm. you, you and I have talked about before and I, I write a lot about. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to get the crazy, crazy spray tan. I'm just going to get a pretty natural level. Um, I've been getting time in the sun as well because, again, it's natural. This time of the year, the sun's perfect. You oh, don't yeah. burn, well, you just get tan. And it's spring, and it's just it's lovely outside. <laughs> it is. And uh, why not get some beach time in, right? Yeah. And that's good for your headspace, too. But, yeah, so, again, I'm not counting calories or macros or doing those kind of things. I'm eating my meals frequently like I need to. I'm working out like I need to. I've increased my cardio, which is a make, which is make just makes sense from like a drop fat standpoint, mm -hmm. and uh, just doing like the normal prep things, like but in a much healthier sort of way. I'm not doing physique or figure. I'm not trying to be shredded and muscular. That's not my objective. Right. My objective is to show up, compete, and you know just see what happens. No, no, it's cool. What's the date? April sixth. We'll have to come back on and talk about it. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> now, you say you write, too? Oh, what's that? You write? I write, yes. Yeah. I do a lot of, a lot of writing about head, healthy headspace, healthy headspace. Is it on your uh, website? It's on my Instagram. Oh, um, cool. So let's talk. How do they find you on my Instagram? Uh, my Instagram is the Molly White mm -hmm. because Molly White was taken. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody else we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't care. Um, but yeah, so my agents insisted I have an Instagram and have a portfolio and all that kind of situation I said okay that's fine if I'm gonna have to put out pictures of myself which mm -hmm. I didn't want to do mm -hmm. I said I'm going to do it my way I'm gonna write about healthy living and see if I can't try to help and inspire some people so I use my post to write about a lot of head headspace and heart space things then on my story I do a lot of workouts and motivational thoughts and inspirations and things that's great I like that I post recipes and like fun stuff like that do you also do that on Facebook or no I do not do the Facebook. No, the Instagram works for you. Yeah. How about your website? You put stuff on there? Yes. Yeah, it, it okay. links the, it reposts me Instagram. It's really hard. I was just talking to somebody today about, um, well, when I went down to do the show in Venice, they said, you're the only guy we know that's older that's really clued into the younger generation with Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that. You know how to do all this stuff and all the technical stuff on the computer. I said, because I wanted to know. I wanted to yeah. learn and I taught myself I got to stay ahead of the game and ahead of the pack, do everything that a 20 year old can do and do it better. Yeah, you have, yeah well, in any industry, you have to stay up with the times. Yeah, but most people don't. Got to stay relevant. Yeah. I know guys, you know, even younger than me, don't know how to use a cell phone. Oh, yeah, I. I it's ridiculous. How can you not know how to send a text or attach a photo? You right, know? it's, yeah, you, you, <laughs> build, you build function. I saw somebody with a flip phone at the gym the other day and I kind of laughed about that because I was like, I <laughs> just I couldn't even remember the last time I had seen one. And I no, was like, I, I think like, I have one in the garage. Yeah. I think I have one before they came out. It's just a regular handheld uh, phone that, that... Like the bar ones? Yeah, like the bar like, ones. Yeah. 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 And then I got the one from Radio Shack that's this big. Back in my day. Like a book. Somebody gave it. Actually, Eric Estrada gave it to me. He said, you can have this. It was like $400 a month. I said, no, I don't want that. Ridiculous. So, okay. So, the Instagram is a place to find you. Yeah. It's, uh, that's where we'll be hanging out. <laughs> You're a very interesting young lady, and I'm really glad you came on and talked about it because it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, well, you know, just there's there's a lot of life experience that comes behind the choices that we make. Yeah. And um, there's a lot you can do with your headspace and your heart space in your life if you were aware and cognizant and intentional. And I feel like intentionality is something that our generation is kind of lacking along with identity. Well, you have to be aware of everything. And I've always told people, even when you're in a supermarket with your basket, there's people that in front of you not even aware you're behind them. Yeah. What's the deal with that? What's the deal with going into line to, to pay for your groceries and you're ready to go and there's some lady up there just talking on her phone, just standing when they add it all up and then she gives them coupons and they say this is the total. Let's just look for a person to find her checkbook. Be ready. Be aware. Yeah. It's, people forget that they're not the only person in space. I know. Oh, I know. It's an island. Yeah, I live on an island. Molly, thank you so much for being here. It's lovely to be here. Thank all you guys for watching Rick's Corner. Stay tuned for more and watch your career just blossom because she's a wonderful person. See you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code Grayson12 on the link below at oldschoollabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson. Personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it will be sent out right away.
and be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.